first two with the Indonesian forces. Mm -hmm. It's a CIA report. Is it CIA on it? Yes. So apparently he's been doing activities in several countries, including the U.S. What is that? CIA confidential. <laughs> Come on now. Yes. It's going to have a chapter three. That's what that's about. Yes. yes. Well, Come on now. Oh, that's it. Okay, so he survives. Yes. He, he survives, but we don't know how yet. I guess that's what I'm getting. Or We're getting a chapter three. Holy shit. Cannot imagine a chapter three without Rocky in it. So this is all coming out as we are watching, right? Or is there a chap the chapter three already out? It's chapter gonna three, come out next year, right? It's gonna come out next year. I've got an Damn article it. that I'll share with you guys from the Times of yes. India. And actually, mm -hmm. um, Shinotsky already said, yes, part three is in development. Holy in crap, development. that was friggin' intense. Yeah. I am impressed. Woo, they're starting shooting in October. Okay. Oh Man, I don't have to wait. Oh. I can't. He's I still can't. alive. And why yeah. does the United States government want Rocky? That is or, a question. Or what if they're questioning the Indian um, Indian Prime Minister too? What if there's something going on with that? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I'm just throwing scenarios out there. I mean, no, it's because, a good scenario. Yeah, uh, it's a really it's a really good scenario because. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, we're going to say goodbye to you guys over there on Scener. Thank you yes. so very all much right. for joining me. Please do check out my schedule on Scener. It's up to date with all kinds of when I do watch movies and all that. So thank you so much for all for being here. We appreciate that. Um, yeah, so part three is coming. And mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of it, um, let me see stop the timer because I don't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what I what I think, well, one, they are shooting a part three and they're starting to shoot it in August. I mean, in October of this year. Okay. Um, so one of the things that um, that I think, yep, nobody's still alive. But yeah, he, yeah, he's still alive. Interesting yeah. thing that they bring in the U.S. into mm -hmm. this. Yeah. So I'm wondering if they're on purpose courting u.s audiences mm -hmm. well the the um there can be like international crimes tribunals and stuff like that mm -hmm. um you can see people from other countries maybe not the cia but other countries can be prosecuted under international law that is true. And, you know if he's slick enough he could actually implicate the prime minister as being you know the person who's actually responsible mm -hmm. for everything because they did not press or focus or try to apprehend him sooner than this. Um, yeah. It could be very interesting. Um, at, you know, it really could. It, it's. I yeah. want to know. Um, <laughs> shoot, that's my OBS. I want to know what's in that CIA. Right. Because it was not very, it wasn't thin at all. So it mm -mm. makes me, it makes me wonder if, the next chapter, yeah, like for international crimes, like you probably have the U.S., you probably have Britain, you probably have probably some African countries. Yeah. It's going to be, oh, my God, it's going to be amazing. Hey, hey what's up? up? Oh, hey, ladies, what's going on? Hi. What's going on? Hi. And what I'm thinking with that, and this goes back to my theory, is that because she shot, fired on her own country, basically, Mm -hmm. Even though that maybe that that well that town is wasn't supposed to be there, she still implemented some um, her own guard, I guess you can say, against her own people. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, and also I'm guessing the CIA's investigation has something to do with weapons because unfortunately mm -hmm. uh, the United States, or I'm not going to say the United States, let's just say that some weapons that were manufactured in the United States yeah. have fallen into the hands of other countries. I don't know, you know, what their capability of of manufacturing weapons is, but a lot of times some mm. of these weapons get sold different ways and the United States monitors some of that. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing maybe that might be part of what they're looking into as well. 
Yeah, that's that. Yeah, because calling out the different weapons and mm -hmm. the military grade weapons. Now you know, and um, you know, and how he was able to get them. You know, and oh my God, I'm I'm just so curious now to see what kind of plot twists and stuff are in this. Like, yeah, exactly. Not wait, and Shinoski, you are absolutely right. This <sighs> is anything. Anything um, right now. I haven't really sat down and watched any shows in a while because I'm just kind of disgusted with the direction everything's going. But this right here, hands down. Yeah, I'll be like, go watch that. If you want some impact, some, you know, I just, all of that. Because like, I was even thinking too, that this kind of thing would not make it here in the United States. It's interesting. Too yeah, violent and stuff. Yep. You're right. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And it's interesting how so many people, like by word of mouth, are like, see this, see this, see this, like R R R. Mm -hmm. That had a lot of violence like in it. Mm -hmm. But people were just like hooked. Like it wasn't gratuitous, you know, just to just to just to do it. And this is a gangster flick. So you expect a certain level of a uh, violence with it. Hey, Hominus Noctura says, "Evening, the Reign of Creole and OG Star Wars." Yeah. Because speaking of Marvel, and um, and I actually did a reaction to a trailer for a movie called Brahmastera, mm -hmm. Part One, which is about Shiva. OG, this is out. This out Marvel's Marvel, and here's the funny thing. <laughs> Disney <laughs> is actually doing the distribution, but it's like, I think it's like Fox, uh, Fox Star, like Fox over in India. Mm -hmm. so that movie is actually coming out in the US and Canada on September 9th. And I'm I'm not kidding. It literally, it out Marvel's Marvel. It's just- Wow. It's incredible um, looking. It, I saw stuff in there that I would expect to see in a Marvel film or some, mm -hmm. you know, like blockbuster film. Um, yeah. It's going to do very well. The visuals are so- beautiful and the powers the way that the powers are shown it's exactly like what you would expect to manifest it it should look spectacular and amazing mm -hmm. and you know kind of all encompassing there are scenes where there's just sort of like these it looks like these shining pellets are flying through the air whenever the power is like starting to manifest itself and you know what it is like there's no question you're not saying gee i wonder what that thing is no you know that it's this power this special mm -hmm. power that's yeah. emanating and creating like this incredible field around the people it's, mm -hmm. it's really so well done. Wow. Yeah. And to go yeah. back to um, the KGF chapter two, I just, again, another installment where I'm just like, what do you mean it's over? Yeah. <laughs> what I'm like, I, was, I want more. And that's what it's supposed to do is leave you wanting more. And lately everything's been lackluster. It's like, you're like, oh, that's it. Okay. Well, I'm not watching any season two when it comes out, you know, because it doesn't leave you wanting more. You know, and it doesn't get you off the edge of your seat or onto the edge of your seat, you know, yeah. and and all that. And even though, you know, like there's a character that was, you know, not killed yet, you know, and stuff, you still were anticipating a greater fight and it followed through, yes. <laughs> you know, exactly. and so that's how you're supposed to do that. And I'm just so impressed. And now I'm like, now I'm like, I haven't felt this feeling in a long time about, damn it, I have to friggin' wait now. Damn. <laughs> mm -hmm. I haven't had that feeling in such a long time, honestly. <sighs> isn't, yeah. it, isn't it isn't it sad that it used to be that way with American movies? Like, I can't wait for, you know, the next uh the yeah. next movie to come out. I can't, I can't wait. This one was just so, so good. And just mm -hmm. like Oh my God! It's just you know, it's it's yeah. just, it's just awesome. I have to say, it's like KGF. They basically took the gangster movie trope and yeah. like plussed it up like crazy. Yeah, it's it's like you because it's because it's like a, it's not a copy, but it has those same gangster elements, but with a story that everyone can kind of relate to, especially here in America. It's like, we really relate to like the underdog, you know, the mm -hmm. person who's been discarded or or looked over or, you know, frozen out or the person where it's like, oh no, we don't pay attention, you know, to them mm -hmm. at all. And Rocky just <sighs> comes yeah. out of nowhere. And like we were saying, we don't know if we should be rooting for him or, or not rooting for him but and now we're rooting for him because we're like is he a dead or alive and what's going on i know it's just like he's, he can't be dead which is like he can't be dead he can't, he can't I, be I dead 
I had said that I thought maybe he had a submarine or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. we I think all three of us agree that he's got some guys in a port who picked him up. Um, you know, they mm-hmm. already have, you know, four or five containers of the gold. Um, and he's currently building up an army and trying to evade the Americans. This is <laughs> this is uh, so such an amazing story that just continues to get even more and more amazing. Um, yeah, it's and I think that the people who are left behind, the mm-hmm. ones who, you know, this story is being told currently right now, I guess present day, right? Is this, yeah. is this? And so um, I have a feeling that the legacy of whatever it was that he built is still there, but it's just hidden since they couldn't mm-hmm. talk about what was going on. Um, it left us in 1980 something, right? Was- 81, I want to say. Okay. So that's a good chunk of time. It's like 40 years ago almost. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm wondering, uh, you know, how far this will go because there's the legend of the gold. They believe it's been blown up on a ship somewhere and, you know, someone's tried to recover that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's all sorts of, I'm sure, uh, ideas of where the stash is because they said he took it all with him. You know, yeah. I know he left some with the people. You know, there's there's definitely some undercurrents of, you know, isn't that great that he did that? You know, these people are going to be okay, even if he's there or even if he's not there, so to speak. So mm-hmm. um, there's so much great expectations for this next film. I mean, I can't, I can't wait. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm reading through something for the next film. And actually, I'm going to show you guys in a minute. But first of all, hello, okay. Captain Mishra. Thank hey. you for being here. So, Hi. Watch Vikram, new type of action top notch. Okay, all right, all right. That's we will. I, was, I gotta put that on the list. That's right. <laughs> we have we have such a long list, and keep these coming because we share these recommendations amongst friends here on the here on the YouTube uh, sphere, especially those of us who comment on American pop culture primarily, <coughs> Indian mm-hmm. cinema is something that's been spreading word of mouth around some of us in this sphere and YouTube. So we love, we're just like, what did you hear? Should I check this one out? Should I check this one out? And word of mouth kind of uh, passes around. So thank you. Shinoski says, girls, I'm starting up a production house. I'm trying to make that kind of entertainment. Oh, Oh, well, God Mm. bless you. Please, please do. Yes, absolutely good luck because we so, we so need so yeah, we need to stuff. bring that quality back in I entertainment. Know. And it used to be that people looked to American cinema for that. And now it's like very few and far between, which is a shame. Hey, Gary Minosa says, hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. Hello. And Dylan Campbell. Um, yeah, I did hear about that, about live, uh, about live PD over on, uh, over on the Reels channel. So thank you for sharing that. I am going to share this. I, I, this is what I should have read further down in this article. Mm-hmm. So they're talking about uh, the shoot, which they're doing later on. But apparently um, Vijay Kiran Kiragandor, which I guess is the the director dropped the hint at the beginning of the shoot of KGF Chapter Two. Once major portions of Solar is complete, I guess this is another film he's doing. Speaking to a news website, producer VJ Karanger said, "We have a we want to have a stellar cast by having characters included from different movies, like in Spider Man, Doctor Strange, and Homecoming, so we can reach wider audiences. We plan to begin shooting in October." of this year so i'm guessing with their cinema canon Mm -hmm. they want to have a crossover which this is going to be real interesting how they how they Mm -hmm. uh how they do that if they do that Mm -hmm. so yeah that's i can't wait i you know i'm going to be reporting on this of course (laughs) on my channel updates about what's going on with KGF uh, part three to let you guys uh, let you guys know. And Fiction Mistress says, I love your Brahmaster breakdown trailer reaction. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that that went on way longer than, yes. <laughs> than we, uh, <laughs> than we sometimes. <laughs> it was like, there was so much stuff to, um, to comment on and Trailers for Indian movies are usually a bit longer than uh, U.S. movies, but there was so much stuff 
yeah. to, um, to comment on. And so many great comments dropped on that video, you know, stuff that we got wrong. It's like, we don't know. We live over here, American. We don't know. But letting us know things about the film, it's, it's amazing. So Thank I'm you. so glad you enjoyed that. Uh, enjoyed that breakdown and tell people I have to break it down because my channel is monetized and I want YouTube to get me with the copyright strike, but we get into it pretty deep in the weeds with that. So I'm glad you enjoyed it because we sure as heck enjoyed, uh, yes. enjoyed doing that. Uh, ladies, I know this is extremely tough. Do you but know that there's a trailer or te um, teaser for chapter three? Mm -hmm. Oh, is there a trailer? Is there it's like a teaser? That's I'm I'm guessing it's a teaser. I'm not sure, but it looks like a teaser. Ooh. Oh wow! Yeah, let me go ahead and get the link and share yeah. it. Yeah, we can we'll, we'll watch that and kind of see if it is or not. You know, because yeah. I know you guys seen more than I have. So, okay, let me see here. I'm gonna let me see here. Urgh. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, I'm, I'm exploring because I'm like, I want more and I want to know. Um, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat. Fiction Mistra saying no teaser for KGF. Oh, oh it's is not it a, like a fan then? thing. Okay. It probably is then. So never mind then. I, I almost like I said, I wasn't sure because you guys know more than I do on that. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure either. I didn't even know about a three. I just knew mm -hmm. about two. So yeah. I had no um no idea about three. Okay, fiction Mishra, thank you. Love you guys in the chat. Thank you. It says just fan made. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, um, okay. Which I, I can cool. understand after watching this that you oh, yeah. have a, a fan made uh trailer. But yeah. I will definitely keep you guys up to date with news about KGF um chapter three because this series is on my radar. So I'll be letting you guys know. Um information that comes out as we get it so i know this is tough Whew. but it's intense yes what grade would you give the kgf chapter two and og is our guest this time around so we're going to ask her let her go first all right so i would say i didn't watch chapter one yet and i will be doing that so i'm watching it backwards i'm watching it star wars style no <laughs> <laughs> almost but just had to put a laugh in that and then um yeah so i would say about a nice nine out of ten you know i'm i'm gonna leave a little bit of comfort room for that chapter one but there's a little bit i'm very impressed like i said it's the first time i've ever been put on the edge of my seat in a very very long time that's why i gave it such a high score because of that and then how you you knew this person still like he was a um what do you call it a um I want to say unsung hero. What I say, the um, anti-hero, like or there you um, go. Thank you, anti-hero or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, and so you cheered him on, but you know still that some of the stuff he wasn't doing wasn't morally right too. Even though he had some moral right or unsung hero or something like that, you know, even though some of his actions were morally right, you know, and um, versus everything else that's been going on. And even the prime minister herself is looking more of a criminal, you know, or suspect than him, <laughs> you know, even though she's not supposed to be maybe, I don't know. So um, yeah, so I'm intrigued with chapter one. So I'm gonna watch that tonight and then um, I will tweet about it later. <laughs> so yeah. That, that's an interesting perspective for someone who's seen two, but they haven't seen one yet. So yeah. that's really that's really cool. It's like, oh my god, this movie is so awesome! I got to go see the, I go see the movie that came uh, came before it. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. What are your thoughts on this film? What would you grade it? Well, um, you know, after seeing the first film, because you have chapter one, I thought to myself, gee, this is a really hard act to follow. You know, how do you best a film that was so incredible? And I think. For one of the rare occurrences, I think this film did best the previous film. And it's very hard to do that. Usually the sequel is not as good as the original. And yeah. there are a lot of things that are missing and, and you feel like you've been shortchanged or the story isn't good enough or they drop the ball. Sometimes even the effects are not great. The intricacy and the you know complexity of the story is not diminished in chapter two. There is plenty of fight scenes. There's romance uh, with his love interest. Um, and, you know, there's politics, 
we see so many amazing, uh, you know, kind of like, well, it looks like this person is on top and now they're not on top anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it really was uh, a, an amazing story that had everything you would want, action, you know, kind of thriller and um, kept you, like you said, uh, OG Star Wars on the, on the edge of your seat um, with twists and turns. And on top of it, you're eager for the next film. So, um, you know, I gave, I think the chapter, ch chapter one was a 10. I'm going to give this one a 10 too. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'll, um, I know for me, uh, chapter one, I definitely, uh, gave that one like a nine chapter two. I'll give it a 9.5 because they no. took risks with things that I did not expect for them to do. Like we were saying, it's like, how are they going to top, you know, chapter, chapter one, but chapter two, it's just like everything just got put on a grander scale, bringing out, you know, who can you trust? Who can you not trust? And it turns out the dude that's been in front of our face for, I don't know how long throughout this, <laughs> That he's, you know, he's the he's the main dude, you know, the mm -hmm. girl that he fell in love with, you know, that he obviously, you know, head over heels for. Went they kidnapped her, man. Well, actually, she ran off and they got her, but he went out to go and get her, you know, and bring her back. And then to find out at the end of the movie, we all know she's pregnant. We all know she's trying to tell him that. And as soon as she does, you know, just his face or how happy he is. And then you mm -hmm. see that freaking target on his back. And you think that they shot him and it turns out that they killed her instead. I was not ready for that. No, I, I, I wasn't expecting that either. That, no. that just, that just broke, that just broke me. And that was a risk that I didn't think that they were going to take with that, but mm -hmm. it, it fit perfectly. For what came yeah. after that, you know? Well, it made sense too with um, Kali and the deity that they worship. You know, the the bringer of chaos, but also the one of the um, the 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 motherly divinity too as well. So um, that mm -hmm. kind of made sense because that's what he he basically worshipped his mom. You True. know, um, like he loved her no to no ends and stuff, and um, she basically, you know, set prophecy about him. If you want to call it that, and um, and he lived up to that. He he made his own way in a world where you know they were poor, you know, enslaved or whatever was going on during that time, mm -hmm. and um, and he went and beat all odds. But he went beyond being on odds. He went through the criminal route for that, you know. Yes. So it's the, again, <laughs> you don't want to care for him for that, but then you do because of the fact that you know for all the moral standards he had on top of that. So. Very, very good. Yeah, OG, you make such a good point in regards to seeing the culture and seeing these gods represented. Mm -hmm. Even at a time mm -hmm. um, in, you know, for so you have not seen the first part, but the idea mm -hmm. that these people, you, I mean, as you know, they were oppressed and then there's this situation yeah. where they're here. And what's interesting about it is that they never lost faith because even during the oppression, mm -hmm. they still kept, you know, their culture and things mm -hmm. that meant something yeah. to them. And it's it's carried out in the film in part two in such a beautiful way. Um, and it, it almost felt like a dream come true in a sense because we wanted these people to have, you know, proper homes and have a Exactly. Future. We mm -hmm. wanted yeah. to free. For them, and, mm -hmm. and then you know, I had made a comment about you know them trying to learn how to defend themselves, and they were pretty much defenseless when they ended up there. You know, it was an unfortunate circumstance. You know, they were they were simple people, and they were not expecting anybody to kind of grab them in, in the middle of the night and bring them to this desolate place to be doing right. this job that nobody wants to do with. But um, what's interesting about it is that now they've completely changed, and their lives were different when they were just let's say villagers. Now they've gone through this huge experience. They're not the same people. It's it's thousands of people, mm -hmm. right, ladies? Right. What twenty thousand people? Mm -hmm. And you know they're going to expand that sentiment of what they experience. It's going to have a profound effect going forward. And I kind of want to see that story told too, because we have shared their story as well, along with Rocky's story, since he is one of the of them as well. But mm -hmm. um, I just love how we're getting that connection with the people in a sense. It's more mm -hmm. sort of uh, you know just the everyday person versus. You know, we got the prime minister through this, you know, but a prime minister is, is not the everyday person, right? 
So That's, yeah, you know, I, I just really love this connection and it, and it feels like this, it was such an important thing for them. Uh, you know, now I'm sure they feel, or, or at least things that can happen, the sky's the limit now for them. You know, they mm -hmm. can they can really do things that they had maybe never even dreamed of. And that was something that I I think was really important and came about for me, at least at the end of, of the second film. Yeah, you know, they had like this empowerment that they didn't have before, because when we saw them in chapter one, they were so beaten down and downtrodden and hardly had anything, not even the right to keep their own child if it was a girl. Yeah. And the thing too is that it shows how much the government, their own government failed them. And that was put in the prime minister's hand because she basically mm -hmm. ignored that. She ignored that. And then he comes along and through his organization set them free basically. And that exactly. makes the government look bad. It really does. It makes the government look bad. So that put that, that's why I say, you know, like, like there are some suspicions on her now because of that. Like, you got to really look at the government. They're nuts. And I'm just going to be honest, they're not here for our best interests in some ways and stuff, you know, and we are going through some curtain times where, you know, free speech has been on the chop block as well as the Second Amendment and all this other stuff. They're not, they're all here for themselves right now. And um, you got to look at past, you know, places too as well. It's, you know, when you have people rise up and stand up for themselves and finally find their courage to survive and exist and you know and stuff and and the means for it of course they're gonna you know treat the person that helped them get out of that situation as a god or as someone worthy to you know live under and stuff like that because you know mm -hmm. it basically set them free it's interesting um like contrast this like say with rrr that was mm -hmm. set during um british occupation of india like yeah. 1920 and then you go from there to now India is independent and self-governing, yeah. but yet you, again, you have another class of people who are being oppressed, you know, and the government looks the other way or only mm -hmm. seems to pay attention because God forbid a gangster actually starts doing the things that the government actually should be mm -hmm. doing and makes them look bad and they don't, uh, they don't like that. So I, I think that's a really, that's an interesting contrast you know, to uh, to see, there was so much in this. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to yeah. watch this again. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch it again <laughs> to see like what uh what what I missed because there was just so much. Uh, and so I much want her wardrobe. I want that wardrobe. You oh me too. Oh, God. I want all of yeah. it. Indian wardrobe, like the women. Oh my God, it's so beautiful because they're so colorful and stuff. Like I got it when I would taught ballet dance and I did ballet dance um, with a troupe. We also got crossover to Bollywood and stuff like that and was, you know, got the privilege of um, learning from a Bollywood dancer at one point and just wearing some of the garments just for that. Oh my God, so gorgeous and so mm. colorful, beautiful. It's like full of life. It's like wardrobe full of life. Right. Gorgeous it colors. So it just, um, it, just it reminds me of like clothes in the Caribbean because they're always mm -hmm. like super like bright, um, bright, vivid uh, mm -hmm. colors. But yeah, I did. I was like, I want that whole rack. I want it all. I want every single piece that's on her. And if she doesn't want it, you can give it to me. Hey, right. <laughs> thank you for subscribing, Johnny Wingate. I sure do appreciate that. Thank you so very much. And let's see, we have uh, Fiction Mistra, which is giving us a whole bunch of info tonight. I appreciate yes. that so very much. It says KGF OG language is Canada language. Canada? Canada? I think Canada, it is. Canada? Canada? Tell us if we're pronouncing it right, because I, I want to <laughs> pronounce it correct. Yeah. And it is the Canada Film Industry or Sandalwood. Hmm. Okay, so you have Bollywood. Yeah, we have Tollywood, mm -hmm. and now Sandalwood. Sandalwood. Interesting. I'm I learned have something to write new this today. down. Yeah, mm -hmm. i I thought that it was a I thought that it was a Tollywood film, but I'm mm -hmm. glad that you guys let me know. I'm gonna write this down because then we could spread this info around. Actually, yeah, Sandalwood. Okay. Oh, okay. Is, 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 is Canada also Tollywood though? Um or is it separate? I think it's I think uh, it's uh, I think it's separate. 
I think it's it's separate in some in some way. Um, you guys can correct me. I think sandalwood is separate from Tollywood or or Bollywood. I think this film is also in other languages besides um, yeah. Because see, OG language is Can Canada. So Telugu Hi. is for Tollywood. That's that one, and Hindi is usually Bollywood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hold on a second. Canada, 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 or Canada, Canada. Canada. Looks which like is Canada. the? Where do we stress the? Yeah. The accent yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, Shinoska, ski, Shinoski, Shinoski. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for doing that. I'm uh, sure it says it. Uh, thank you. Because I really want to pronounce it right, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. I really do. But that is so cool to know. So we can kind of helps me when I'm finding films and stuff like that to classify what um what, mm -hmm. what uh, where they are. And yeah. Romendra Pandy, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It says KGF chapter two is a three hour climax. Oh God. You're not wrong. I know. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. It was no downtime, guys. It was none. Um, none. And I freaking loved it. Oh my God. I was just like, I, I don't want to be over. <laughs> I, don't want I know. To be over. It. No. What happens to him? What really happens? Does he survive or, or what's going on here? Yes, you know? No. Let's, let's shot. We see him. He's like underwater and sinking with like gold bars oh, around so him. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, those truck containers. And I don't think we saw his bottle of Jack Daniels. I was waiting for that. <laughs> I know. At least it should have still been by him by his hand or something, or maybe him holding on to it still. <laughs> he also filled, like <laughs> absolutely. He also filled out the suit very nicely. Like, oh God, yeah. He, he's so fit and just walking around with the suit and, and just those scenes. I mean, he certainly, Rocky certainly has this image that is in my mind. Like, you know, I'm, I know he has to wear fine clothes and just kind of strut around. He has a presence and it is appealing. He's very attractive. Yeah. So, um, you know, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. Attractive and very charismatic and dang it. I want a video of just every single suit. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, someone needs to do like one of those little commentary videos of like just him like with some kind of music in there and then him you know every single scene with him walking and his sunglasses on and different takes and angles and stuff there you go oh and yeah absolutely. this is our favorite suit this one's a really nice one this one's really good oh I man, like the, the, blue suit too. the red suit Lorena those were the two that got my attention was that blue suit he wore it at one point in the film and then he had a red suit on Mm -hmm. And I, I thought those look cool, but he looked great in everything. There's nothing he wears that looks bad. Yeah, and he wore red to see the senator too. And I'm like, that's a that's a color of power right there, leadership right there. Yeah. And he's like, boom, yeah. red. Yeah. And she's oh like in her black. And so she goes from the red to black. And they're like, hmm, is this like, you know, like some kind of like they're using the color to indicate something, you know, like. Yeah, so I, I look into all that kind of stuff. Like, okay, so black. So does that mean that, you know, she's, you know, there's something going on with her that we should be suspicious about where he comes in with red and, you know, with power and, you know, confidence and stuff, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. And then I, I need to pay a little bit more attention to some of that. And so occasionally mm -hmm. we've seen in the film, sometimes where they'll do their, the head movement, mm -hmm. you know, a few times, you know, it's like, and, and you can spot it out right away, uh, which I think also adds to this, this experience that the colors and the, the cultural uh, significance of the gods and then these mm -hmm. movements that they do, it really enriches the film so much. Yeah, it, it does. A funny, um, interesting thing. And Fiction Mistress says, fun fact, most of the Hollywood visual effects done by Indians. Yeah, I have, I have heard that. Mm -hmm. I've heard that they need to let you guys do the effects, not the not the ones here in the states. Because goodness, mm -hmm. well, that's another story that they're yeah, that is a, <laughs> yeah. overworking them and running, you know, running them in the ground. Yeah, another <laughs> another video to come out. But it's interesting with like with some of the cultural things, like with the Indian head shake. Like yeah. I grew up with um, some uh, friends who were Indian. I believe they were Punjabi. I think. 
I had never seen that in my life until I'm working in IT and we had some folks that came over like from offshore. I could think it was like their first time being in America and they're doing this. And I'm like, I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm, I'm not trying to be culturally insensitive, but it's like, I grew up with some you know, with some friends who their families were Indian, some were born here, some weren't. And I have never seen that in my life. Mm -hmm. And I called my friend from uh, high school. She's just like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a country thing. When I go back to India to see some relatives, they do that, but we, we don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But I just thought it was interesting to see, because I'm like, what does that mean? So they told me, so it's like, okay, so now I get it. So when I have coworkers, if they're on, when I would meet them in person or if they were on screen and they do that, I'm like, okay, uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I'm like, okay, I'll follow up with you offline. <laughs> Talk about that. But it's, <laughs> it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting uh, cultural, cultural mm -hmm. thing that I've seen. Uh, Fiction Mistress says, Brahmastra of VFX done by Prime Focus Visual Effects India, who is <laughs> owner of DNEG Visual Effects in London. Okay, because the effects in Brahmastra, oh my God. Yeah. Jaw was open on the floor. Mm -hmm. I tell people, and we said actually in the video breakdown, that it is what the eternal should have been. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was just so spectacular, Lorraine. Um, I still can't get over uh, what I saw in in the trailer, and you know, it's just so well done. Um, and it really does take you to that idea of of them actually having powers. It looks real. It mm -hmm. looks so real. I can't wait. Wow. September 9th is going to be out, coming out in Canada and coming out in the U.S. I can't wait. So. You know, I'm going to be making videos about it, <laughs> <laughs> videos about it. I can't believe it's been flown under the radar. But first of all, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Big, huge thanks to OG Star Wars. So well, glad you could join yes. us. So Me bad. too. I'm like, I'm so happy. I'm like so happy. I'm still on the high from watching that. <laughs> Girl, we're going to have to bring you back when we do watch party for three idiots. Um, that's okay. also been recommended. Okay. And, uh, it's a comedy. Uh, okay. Indian comedy, so I'll have to hit you up for, for that one, too. All right. Let me know. that. And, of course, thank you so much, of course, for being here, my dear. I sure do appreciate that. Please do subscribe to these wonderful, wonderful ladies. But you know what? I'm going to let them talk about their channel so you guys can uh, go ahead and subscribe. I'll make sure I put that in the description box. So, OG, why don't you tell the folks where you are and where they can find you? Hi everyone, I'm OG Star Wars and you can find me on my YouTube channel, OG Star Wars, and I specialize in George Lucas era of Star Wars and do also discuss sometimes some Star Wars news that's happening today. And I provide lore videos, coffee chat every Thursday, 9 a.m. So we talk about, nerd about the lore and then talk about cringe factor. So any kind of crazy news that's been coming out with Star Wars as well. And I also offer like clips, um, EU shorts that um, are clips from the novels, all of that. So anything George Lucas era, EU movies, games, or whatever. That's what my channel's about, taking you back to the heart of Star Wars. So yeah, and then I have a video coming out here within the next couple of days. It's an edit right now um, about the real Obi-Wan Kenobi and his first love, um, Siri Tachi. So stay tuned for that. I'm excited about that one. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds so amazing. Oh I, I love I love OG's channel. I do not get to watch as often <laughs> as often as I would, but for mm -hmm. like Star Wars lore knowledge, mm -hmm. you can't get any better. Yeah, he's not really bi, never was intention to be bi. And his first love was when he was a Padawan 13 or something like that, or 12. And he, they decided to basically part ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, because for to remain a Jedi and stuff like that, but that never her, she never left him or left his heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Looking yeah. forward to that. Mm -hmm. Yes, folks, please, please do do subscribe to OG Star Wars. I've got a link to her 
YouTube you. channel in the description box. So please do check that out. <clears throat> what do you have going on? Where can folks find you? Let the folks well, you guys can find me on my YouTube channel called Positive Fandom, but I'm also on Twitch and on Odyssey. So you can check me out there as well. Tomorrow morning at 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I have my Sunday brunch show. It's a live show where we do all the parlay in the fandom. So definitely check that out. Monday nights, I'm on a show called Toxic Femininity, um, which is at 8 p.m. Eastern on Midnight's Edge. Sometimes on Wednesdays and Thursdays, you can find me on the One Six Scale Man Network, either on Say What or Uncivilized Scoundrels. On Tuesday, I'm going to be doing a review with you, I believe, Lorena, um, called for the movie Prey. Um, yes. Which, uh, is the new uh, Predator film that everybody is talking about. So I'm looking forward to that um, at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On mm -hmm. Fridays at 12 uh, p.m., excuse me, yeah, 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, you can find me on Midnight's Edge in the Morning. Um, I think Thursday, I'm also going to be streaming with you, Lorena, on our Toxic Male Appreciation Show. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern on Lorena's channel. And um, I'll be back here. Um, well, I'll also be streaming with you, Lorena, on Friday night for, um, I think we're going to be doing another uh, Anime Girls view. But if we don't do it this Friday, um, I will be back here on Saturday, I believe. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I, it's okay. I have to send everyone like a like a list of uh, what it is that we're, that we're working on. But over the weekend, I will be streaming again with Robert Meyer Burnett on the Post Geek Singularity on our show Midnight Music. So guys, Thank you. Awesome. Thank please you check so out my much. channel and subscribe and watch some of the videos so I can increase my watch hours. I'm trying to get to monetization. And for everybody who subscribed out there and for all the support from the community, Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And thank you, Fish and Mystery. You will love their channels. Thank you so very much. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, OG. And thank you for, for being here pleasure. watching this. Absolutely amazing, amazing movies. Thank all you guys are here. And thanks to you guys for being there in the chat. And if you're watching this on the replay, please do hit that like button. Certainly hope you enjoyed the movie. And we... We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.